daily devotion. We do a scripture and a prayer. It's kind of set the mood for what we're doing because we're all here for God's glory. So um, we're going to continue on with the scripture we've been doing this week, which is Matthew 5. And uh, we're on verse 14 and 15 today, which says, You are the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden, nor do people light a candle and put it under a basket, but on a lampstand, and gives light to all in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others, so that they may see your good works and give glory to our Father who is in heaven. So with that being said, today, we're all here to do God's work. We're all here to inspire others. So keep in mind that as we do that, we are now on display for the entire public to see what we do. And eventually we will be on display for the entire world to see how God works through us, okay? So keep that in mind as we do what we do. Let's keep positive attitudes. Let's stay happy, all smiles. This is going to take a little time doing this today. So let's stay in that mode, okay? Let's pray. Gracious Father, we thank you for bringing us together again today. We thank you for all that you're doing on this wonderful project. God, we give you glory and honor just for the people who you've allowed us to have a part of this. We thank you for the city of Fitzgerald and the Fitzgerald Police Department and all that they're doing for us. God, we give you glory and honor for just being able to be in a good atmosphere and a good family-like condition. God, we pray that you will give us favor. You will bring the temperature down and keep us cool, keep us hydrated. We ask that you hold back the weather. Don't let it rain until we're done. And we thank you right now for all that you're going to do and all that you've allowed to happen. God, we pray that you give us safety as we begin to uh, move this set onto that main highway. We ask that you be with us and you give people the ability to uh, respond accordingly and have a cooperative mind. And we Thank you, and we give you all the glory and praise. In Christ Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I work with homicide. The Tate the Mills. Homicide unit. I you know. <laughs> Who driving? You don't mind. <laughs> hey, you the driver. It don't matter. Both of y'all going to jail. It don't matter who drive. He drive. You drive. Everybody going to jail. At the end of the day. <laughs> Everybody got to jail. Dude, that day could have been me. Could have been my wife and my daughter without a father and a husband. But God, you spared me. You didn't let death come. I need you to relieve this pain. If you relieve the guilt. I just can't take it no more. I just can't do it. <laughs> you know, with all due respect, why does it matter to the district attorney's office that we hold him or not? Are we stepping on your toes again? With all due respect, Mr. Carter Sprints were nowhere to be found. I found him. On two boxes. We did. Sorry. What kind of people you got working for you? <laughs> oh, Get your hot <laughs> team. <laughs> Hey guys, it's Sydney Bryan, writer director for Sydney Bryan Films. It's such a great opportunity to uh, be able to come to you and tell you a couple of things and um, share some progress with you. Uh, but before I really get into the progress of things, I really just wanted to take a moment to kind of give people a rundown on how we got to uh, where we are now. Um, I get a lot of inboxes and I actually had somebody, they said, you know, is things not going the way you want it to go because you guys threw something together at the last minute. And it kind of bothered me a little bit because um, when we think back to when we started, uh, I don't really think anybody knows how much work we put into getting this thing started. And um, when I say thing, I'm definitely referring to surrender. Um, but this really started in March of 2013. That's three years ago. Um, I had our first meeting with our first donor, our big donor investor. And um, I went in, I met with them, and I gave them the whole plan. I told them uh, how all of it works and, you know, what the, the best plan and, you know, how we could do it and a uh, small budget. And um, it was... It was different because at first the, 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 the group of people I was speaking to, they were down, they were excited about it, and, um, you know, we were going to make a movie. And, you know, over time, uh, things kind of changed because it became, you know, this is new, this is unfamiliar, we've never done anything like this, so, you know, we don't really know if we want to take on this project. So what if we give you the money and you and your guys go do it, you make the movie, and um, you guys just pay us back? And if you want to keep giving us money, you would figure that out, whatever the case may be. So long story short, that was in March of 2013. And all it was was an idea. 
There was no really uh, a true um, story. The story was there. I had the story in my head, but it was not like really cultivated and, and completely thought out. It was just a story and idea that I had. And be honest with you, the Lord gave it to me in a dream. And um, I kind of just ran with it. So I, I gave him, I told him, you know, give me the October of 2013 and I'll have a full script. And, you know, in, in between the months of March 2013 and October 2013, I got married. I had my first, uh, well, um, had my first kid. Yeah, had my first kid, got married, um, took a new job, moved, and still had the script to write. And I can remember sitting in uh, my cousin's basement in Swanee, Georgia, and um, Virgil and Deborah let me live with them for a couple of weeks while we got set up and got our feet in the ground and our feet got wet, in other words, got back on our feet, however you want to put it. Long story short, I remember being in their basement and I only had 29 pages of the script written and this was like September. And I said, okay, God, you gave me a plan, you gave me a vision, they're on board, so you got to give me the rest of the story. And um, I remember going to sleep on my knees. I had been praying and I remember falling asleep and I woke up and I wrote from about 7 p.m. to about 7 a.m. the next day and got up, went to work, came back home, did the same thing. So for two days, I wrote for about 12 hours and the story came to life. It was a bigger story. It was a bigger picture. It was more understanding of what the story was. And so I got the script to him, you know, really, I think I gave him October 10th and I had the script to him like the 1st of October. So God really worked that out. And, uh, you know, that was just the base script. We still had some cleaning to go through. Um, one of my good friends, he does a lot of cleanup work for me. He took the script and started, you know, rehatching it, making sure it made sense and working it out. So November 2013 rolls around. And that was the biggest thing because we had our first meeting with the city of Fitzgerald. I got a chance to meet a beautiful, wonderful person, um, Alicia, who uh, worked at the city's tourism office. She was the city of Fitzgerald's film liaison. And um, I got a chance to sit down and meet with her and talk to her about, you know, what we wanted to do. And it was amazing because the mayor said, you know, we want this done here in Fitzgerald. And so um, she took us around to maybe 10 or 15 businesses and organizations, companies in the area. And they kind of just said, yes, whatever you want, just let us know. Yes, we're on board with it. So that worked out very well. We started really nailing down some location ideas, and um, I went in on my Christmas break, uh, actually my Thanksgiving break, I went and um, scouted, you know, took some pictures of some places and, and said, you know, this is where we want to do it at, yada, yada, this and the third. So December rolled around, we announced that we're having a casting call coming up the next year in February, I think it was, and, you know, we just ran with it. January rolls around, January 2014, and we needed one more investor. You know, we had the original budget that we said would do it, but the more we started looking at things, we didn't really want to have to struggle in doing this. So we said, you know, if we can get one more investor. And it was amazing because we needed one more investor for $2,500. That was it. We just needed $2,500. And um, man, I'm only going to tell you about three of those investors. Uh, I'm not going to call their names out, but um, one in particular, I stayed on the phone with this lady. I called her office, kept calling, kept calling. Uh, we just kept getting a runaround. She's out of town. She's not in. Um, her cell phone, she left it here. She's not going to be in for a few days. Uh, her husband's in the hospital. She's going to be out for a couple of days. Uh, it's just one thing after the other. I finally got her on the phone. And she said, why did you let me forget? I told you I was going to give you the $2,500. I'm going to keep my word. I'm going to make sure I give you that $2,500. And it just never came to pass. It never happened. So in the midst of all that, we met with another investor, took him out to lunch, paid for his lunch. Um, and we felt good when we left him at first. And, you know, short of a little time, um, I got a phone call. Actually, I got an inbox on Facebook and um, he was real busy, so I respected it. But he inboxed me and said, you know, this is not something I want to do right now. Um, so we had one more one more guy in our pocket that I really felt like um, if he saw you know, what we were trying to do, saw our vision. He had done some work with us before. Um, needless to say, we really just felt like this would be the one he'd do it for us. He'd help us out because he knew we were good for what we do. He saw us work. He saw us put in blood, sweat, and tears into projects that were going to yield nothing, but we were excited about doing it. So um, he gave us the runaround for like a month and a half. Uh, and I think two weeks before we absolutely positively had to have the money, he bailed. Uh, Emerson got a call. He said he didn't want to do it. Oh, well. So March of 2014 rolls around, and um, 
the question comes up. I remember sitting at Emerson's father's house uh, for a little power session of me, him, and Bobby, and we were talking and we're talking and we're talking, and the question just kept coming up. Should we do it or should we not do it? Should we pull it and just say we're not going to do it, we're not ready to do it? Uh, mind you, we had already had auditions and everything, and it just kept coming around. Should we do it or should we not do it? I, 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 um, for a minute, Emerson said, don't do it. And then he said, do it. And I was saying, don't do it. And Bible was saying, I don't want to do it. I don't think we should do it. So, you know, it was just one of those things where we had to make a decision, you know, do we let the people down? And I made up my mind. I think at one point I got angry. Um, I remember being in a meeting in a, a restaurant, and um, they were saying we shouldn't do it. Sydney, we don't need to do it. Just give them their money back and, and say we're going to hold off on it. And I said, no, listen, we made a vow, we made a promise. Come June the 1st, we shooting something. I don't care what you say, we shooting it. In the conversation, I walked out of the restaurant upset with my briefcase and a piece of chicken in my hand. But long story short, I just made up my mind that, you know, I wasn't giving up on this dream because this was such a big project, it was so close to my heart, and I know that God wouldn't give me something and not provide a way to do it. A lot of times we give up right when God is really testing our faith. He's really wanting to stretch us and see, you know, are you going to trust me even when you can't see me? And so that's what I had to do. I had to have my faith. And so this whole project, my whole company, all of us together, everything was riding on my faith. It wasn't riding on Latrina or Renee or Bobby or Emerson or the donors. It was riding on my faith. Everything rode on my faith. Um, so we made the decision to do it. And April rolls around. And at this point, it was no turning back. People were lining up. Actors were taking off their jobs. They were getting their schedules together. So, I mean, we were at a place where we just could not turn back. Um, we had one actor lined up, and a lot of people asked me, you know, how, how did you end up playing Tracy? Because um, anybody that knows me knows that I don't want to be an actor. I don't want to be on camera. I want to be the director. I want to be the guy behind the camera. I want to be that guy. I don't want to be in front of the camera. So people started asking me, how did you become Tracy? Um, well, we had this actor lined up. Um, we were prepared to do a lot for this guy, really take care of him while he was where we were at because he wasn't from Fitzgerald, but we were going to take care of him any way we could. And um, he came in, auditioned, and we think he did well. We knew he needed some help with some training. We had actor coaches, Debbie Hamlin and um, Brian Ray. They were both professional actor uh, teachers for theater, and we figured they could cultivate the skills of the people and really get them where they wanted, where we wanted them to be at. And this guy out of the blue calls one day, and he says, I got to be paid. You know, we take a step back and we go, man, listen, nobody's getting paid. Nobody's getting paid. We have crew coming from Atlanta, volunteering their time. Every person in Fitzgerald is volunteering their time. There is no money to give you. And um, he said, you know, well, after talking to my sister and talking to some other people, um, I should be getting paid for my work and this and this and this. And mind you, this guy has never acted in his life. He's never been in anything in his life. But he felt like he needed to be paid. And um, we were on the phone. And uh, phone conference, and everybody's on the phone, Renee, Latrina, Bobby, Emerson, and they joke about it. They said, well, Sydney, you do, art, you do craft services, you do makeup, you do wardrobe, you do directing, you do lighting, you do camera, you do everything. Why don't you just go on and be Tracy? And it got silent for like maybe two or three minutes. Nobody said anything. And I said, I'll do it. <laughs> I said, why not? What the heck? And uh, Latrina says, you know, if anybody knows the script, you know it. If anybody knows how the character should be, you do. Just so, I mean, let's go with it. So I end up being Tracy. Um, again, this is just one of those situations where God's really testing your faith. Are you going to throw in the towel? Are you going to give up? Are you going to, you know, bail on it and say, I don't want to do it. And um, long story short, I played Tracy, played the role of Tracy. It worked out. Um, I'm not going to win an Oscar or an Emmy or anything like that behind it. But, hey, the film came out, and it's a great film. I didn't kill anyone. That leaves 17-year-old Harlan Carter. Nah, Harlan would kill anyone. He's a good kid. He's a good kid. He's good. Everybody keeps saying he's a good kid. He's got an arrest record a mile long with everything from sexual assault to drugs, and he's a good kid. You have to understand, his mother walked out on him when he was nine, and one year later, Reuben went to prison for seven years. All he knows is this life. This life? What does this life even mean? Survival. Tooth for tooth, bullet for bullet, making it the best way he knows how. It's not his fault. It's not the hand that he was dealt, it's the hand that he chose you. It is the hand that you dealt him. Reuben left you in charge to make sure that he was okay, and you're clean as a whistle. Mr. Reese. May 2014, I had a last meeting with the city of Fitzgerald, and uh, this was all about 
housing because we had these people coming from Fitzgerald. Em I mean, from Atlanta. Emerson lived in Atlanta now. Uh, Joshua Dodd lived in Atlanta. I lived in Atlanta. So Renee and Latrina, they lived in Douglas and Sylvester. Um, Bryce lived in Douglas. All these people lived um, out of town. We were coming to Fitzgerald to do this. And so um, we needed a place for people to stay. And the city of Fitzgerald has a, a wonderful economic development program where they go in these communities throughout their city and they build these new houses and they put them on the market to sell to help be, uh, edify the community. And so they had these two houses that were right down the street from each other. And they said, listen, we'll let you lay in the houses for the whole time you're here. Don't worry about it. Um, they probably need some cleaning and, you know, whatever else. You guys get there, check them out. If anything needs to be fixed, let us know. We'll get it fixed. But feel free to use both the houses for as long as you need them. And um, we're just happy to do it. So that really was a blessing. And then I, I call up Turner Furniture in Albany, Georgia. And I say, listen, you know, we're, we're a Christian company. And we're shooting our first real big project. And uh, the Lord has blessed us with these two empty houses. And we need some furniture. Uh, really, we just need some beds. And they said, well, how many beds do you need? Well, there were two, uh, two bedroom houses. And we knew we could possibly, you know, get, you know, a living room as a bedroom in both houses. So technically, we were going to use it as three bedroom houses. We needed six beds. They said, okay, no problem. And the guy says, well, listen, I did a repo a couple of days ago. And uh, we got some brand new um, Serta mattresses here, and they've only been used probably two or three weeks, maybe a month or so. And the lady just isn't, she didn't pay the first bill, you know, at, you know whatever the case may be. Um, we can deliver them. Here's the thing. Um, I just need a favor from you. And I said, what's the favor? We'll do anything. He said, I don't want them back. You guys will deliver them to you. You keep them. I said, great. Yeah. So um, sure enough, two days, no, probably two weeks before production started, um, Turner Furniture drops off six brand new starter mattresses, mattress and box springs, our houses in Fitzgerald, and we were good to go. Um, so at this point now we had to figure out police cars, you know, what are we going to do about that? Because we don't have enough money to do it the way the production company is doing, rent a police car, a picture car that's ready for film and, you know, get it d dressed up and, and decal the way we want it. So what are we going to do? I met with the police chief and um, it, it just went very, very well. He, um, he really did some stuff that he didn't have to do. And I was so thankful they opened up their, their cars to allow us to use their cars in the film. Um, and they had some cars they were no longer actually using on the road that was still decaled and, and still worked as far as lights and stuff. And they said, you know, we'll get the batteries fixed, get the tires fixed on it, make sure it's running, and we'll let you guys use it for as long as you need to use it. Make sure you have production insurance. Done that. So God blessed us with the police cars that we needed for the film. Um, the city name. We had to go through a little bit of a process, but um, the city was able to release the city's name to us to use in the film. That worked out. And then it was just one thing after the other. We need a fire. We need an EMS involved. We need the police department involved. We need the sheriff department involved. We need the road department involved. All these people we needed involved. And we made one phone call to Alicia there at the city of Fitzgerald. And boom, boom, boom. Every door opened up. We had everything we needed, whenever we needed it, whatever time we needed it, however long we needed it. As long as they didn't have an emergency call, we could use the system for as long as we needed to. And so God really blessed us. Uh, actors' workshops took off. Um, we had table readings. Everything was going well. My uncle came in as a former state trooper and taught all the actors who are going to be using weapons, the proper way to use weapons, how to hold them, uh, how to point them, how to shoot them, all the great stuff. Um, and, and lo and behold, before we knew it, it was June 1st. Day one of production and everything was going. People were showing up, set was starting, dressing was going, wardrobe was going, hair and makeup was going. Um, it was full effect. We were shooting a movie on June the 1st of 2014. And this has been one year in progress, really a year and about six months that we've been sitting here working towards this one day. And um, it, it just went great. I couldn't ask for anything better. We prayed every day. We read a scripture every day. And, and, you know, we just asked God to be present in what we were doing and that his hand would be on this project. Well, 12 days went by. And I remember sitting down with Latrina, who kind of handles our finances, and she said, we don't have any money. What you mean we don't have any money? She said, we don't have any money. Um, all the equipment that we had to purchase, all the equipment that we had to rent, um, we were expecting a, a group of individuals to help feed and take care of craft services the entire time of the production, and that fell through. They didn't come through for us. And um, she said, we don't have any money. What are we going to do? I said, well, I'm just believing God, so I'm going to work out. Well, lo and behold, it did. Debbie Hamlin gets on the phone with people, and she starts calling people. And before you know it, every single day, a church, I think United Methodist Church was one. Uh, Harbor Baptist Church, I believe, was another one. And I don't want to leave anybody out. I shouldn't call that name, but the churches in Fitzgerald, you know who you are. 
Um, they, they just started showing up out of nowhere, buying pizza for the crew, Zaxby's for the people. Businesses started buying lunch for us. Banks started buying lunch for us. Uh, people, individuals who didn't belong to a particular church or belong to a particular business said, I just want to feed y'all one day. And it just happened. So all in all, all this stuff, again, is just riding on faith. Everything was riding on faith. And I said, okay, God, I see how you're working this out. You keep doing this. I'm yours. I'm going to do whatever you tell me to do because I see how you work. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. It simply means that no matter how hard things may be, how bad your day was, who made you mad, you can go to God in prayer and he'll make everything easy. Okay? Okay. Let's pray. I want to do it, Daddy. Okay. Make sure you pray that Mama makes it home safe. Okay. All right, let's go. Dear Lord, thank you for a great day today. Thank you for helping me do good on my test today, and thank you for Mommy and Daddy helping me study. Lord, I'm going to ask you that Mommy make it home safely and let us sleep well. Lord, let us wake up knowing all is well. Oh, Lord, thank you for Miss Patrick who teaches me, even though she really does get on my nerves. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Amen. Hey January the 2015 rolled around and um, we needed pickup shots. And, and basically pickup shots are the things that you see in between scenes that kind of help the film go along and carries the film along. It's the stuff you see between dialogue and stuff like that. And um, I really wanted aerial shots in this film because I wanted the film to be more, um, when you watched it, I wanted you to feel like you were watching a bigger budget film than what we've done before, where, like even I, when you know it was just everything was based. And um, I met a guy, his name was Michael Wise. I met him um, through John... Thurkovic, who is the theater manager, I met him and he said, you know, I got a drone and I do all this real estate, you know, area shots and stuff, this and this and this and this. Um, I'll be more than happy to help you guys out. I said, okay, well, let's, let's do it. So I called him up one day, not knowing if he remembered the conversation from seven months ago or however long ago it was. And he said, yo, man, I'm ready to go whenever you are. Just let me know. So we set a week and I said, okay, this is what we're going to do. So, um, he did everything we needed. He got all our aerial shots, all of our pickup shots. We ended up reshooting an entire scene. Um, there was originally supposed to be this big explosion scene in the middle of the film, and um, just some stuff didn't really work out the way we really wanted it to um, on the finance side. Uh, we actually filmed the explosion scene. We, we done the smoke, we done the fire, we done uh, the cars and all the great stuff and getting blown out in the building. We done all of that. We did all of that. Um, but the money wasn't there to do the digital side of it. So we ended up having to go to something different and uh, Michael Wise stepped in and filmed that entire replacement scene and it was done seven months after we shot the initial film. Yes, seven months later we shot an entire scene and added it to the film and um, God really blessed us with that and it worked out. Um, you sure the signal's coming out of this building? Yes, sir. Positive. Yes, sir. Let's go. February, we pulled the trigger and announced that we're going to have a premiere coming up in June 2015. And I remember being 
back on the phone in a conference call, and we were all going, don't do it, don't do it. We, it's too soon. We're not ready. Emerson was saying, don't do it. Latrina was saying, do it. I was saying, don't do it. Bobby was saying, do it. R Renee was saying, don't do it. I was saying, do it. So, it, it, you know, we was going back and forth. We should do it. We shouldn't do it. And I was saying, you know, we want the people to be excited. We don't want to lose our audience. We don't want the people in Fisher to feel like we're not working on it. We got to do something. We got to do something. We got to do something. So do the premiere. Can't, we can't pull back at this point. So uh, April 2015 rolled around, and, you know, there's no turning back. We're back at that place where there's no turning back. you got to do it. So we start running all these different situations and complications, audio issues, uh, just one thing after the other. My computer crashed. Emerson's computer was going too slow. It couldn't do it. Color correction had to be done. It was always something, 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 something. And so I got back in the place of prayer, and I said, okay, God, you said we were going to do this. You said you were going to make this happen. You gave us the plan. You gave us the idea. You've, made us, you've helped us get this far. You're not going to drop us at this point. So, God, whatever you're trying to get out of us to make it happen, you know, you, hey, here we are. We surrender everything we have. We need to get this film done. So I don't remember exactly every detail of how it happened, but I remember me and Emerson had a meeting at his house, and he said, my computer is not the best thing to do it, but we're going to do our best. I'll have it done by the date. He had it done a day before. God just worked it out where, you know, everything panned out. Everything went according to plan. Um, and so all along, all through May, we're getting all these emails, and I'm getting Facebook men. I got people, and it got a little discouraged because people were going, where's the movie at? Thought you said it was a movie coming out. Where's the movie? Where's the movie? So I said, you know what? Put the trailer out. So we put a trailer out, and that kind of relieved people, you know, gave people something seen. They go, oh, it really is serious. This is a movie coming out. Yay, yay. Okay, great, great, great. And uh, June rolls around, and we have the premiere. Bam. It was a great success. We filled the house. People came from far and near. We had people came from Washington. Some people came from uh, Houston, Texas. Some people came from uh, Cincinnati. Some people came from North Carolina. Some people came from South Carolina, from Florida. We had people came from everywhere to see the premiere of Surrender. And it was a great success. I'm very thankful to God that he worked it out that way. Um, even with the premiere, John Durkovic, man, he just jumped in there and made things happen. It was amazing, though, that the night before the premiere, we go in to test the DVD that's going to run the film. And this man has been showing movies on this DVD player for months. We go in to preview the film that night before the, the premiere, and no picture comes up. It's all these blue and yellow lines and pink lines and stuff on the screen. Something's wrong. So we go out, we buy a new Blu-ray DVD. We come back, put that in. Still nothing. So we go through all this, replacing cables, pulling out parts and this and this and this. Long story short, if there was a way to discourage us in what we were doing, we got every single one of them. Everything just... But all in all, God worked it out. The day of the premiere, um, I believe it's Colony Bank right down the street from the theater, do allowed us to use their... Uh, their big grill. I grilled chicken. I think I grilled 120 pounds of uh, chicken. Uh, Emerson was there with me. Bobby was there with me. Um, Maurice King was there with me. And we made it happen. I don't know how we did it, but man, we made it happen. Not only did I grill 120 pounds of chicken, we turned around and set up the theater for the premiere. We set up the red carpet. We couldn't get the backdrop we wanted, but God bless us with the idea. We came up with a backdrop. You know, we were just, we were in the, in the mood of doing, you know, doing this thing because we, we, we had a plan and we knew that God was going to bless it. So let's move ahead. Now we get to six months later, um, January 2016. And, man, it's like, you know, God, we've got the film. We've reached out to all kinds of distribution companies. I mean, I have emailed and talked on the phone with nearly 20 companies about distributing this film. And three of the companies said, yes, we'd love to. We have a company, I, I know for a fact i got a company I can call right now and sell this film to, and they'll distribute it on DVD and maybe get you some theaters. And I said, okay, great, send us a contract. When we get the contract, Emerson takes his time looking over the contract, and we realize that it's a Ponzi scheme. Yeah, they can get the theater. Yeah, they can get the DVDs. But we, the company, and the donors, the people who fronted the money to build this multipurpose center for the city of Fitzgerald, we're not going to get any money out of it. All we're going to do is give them a product, and, and they're going to take that product, and they're going to make money on it, and we're not going to get anything out of it. Um, so can't do that. So we get another contract. We look over it, and we're thinking, you know, this might be the one. Well, they need $5,000 up front. we got to pay them five grand up front just to sell the film. We don't have five grand. Can't do that. It's not going to work. Um, so, you know, the next thing rolls around. we got another contract. Got a contract probably three weeks ago. And... 
It's one of the companies that I fought to get. I was like, yes, 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 we need this company. This is a great company. They can distribute it. It's going to be great, 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 great. Read through the contract. It's not beneficial to the company. It's not beneficial to the film. It's not beneficial to Fitzgerald. It's not beneficial to the donors. It's not beneficial to me. It's not beneficial to this company. It's just, you know, basically same thing. Give us a product. We're going to sell it on DVD. We may even put it in a couple of local theaters, but guess what? You're not going to make any money off of it. And let me say this, people. I want you to really understand. I, I've really never been about the money, but this whole project has a purpose. Need to make some money so we can build that community center in Fitzgerald. And so... Um, with that being said, we ended up to what a lot of people will say, you know, that means you didn't make it. And it's called self-distribution. And that doesn't mean we didn't make it. That means we found an alternative route to make this happen. It means we got to do a lot more work. Yeah. I just gave you two and a half years of work. Just told you how much work we put in. So why wouldn't we keep putting in work? It's just a little bit more work to do. But long story short, um, we're going to self-distribute Surrender. Uh, DVDs will be available June the 2nd, 2016. Um, if nothing goes wrong with the, the distribution, the, the, um, the duplication company or the mail or whatever the case may be, I should have a shipment of DVDs um, available to me by June the 2nd. People in Fitzgerald who've already pre ordered your DVD, you're going to get your copy. Um, you're going to get it pretty quickly. I'm, I'm planning to come down there and see you guys and, and personally be there to make sure you get your copy. Um, People who want to order it, you're going to be able to order it. Um, it's just the thing is we got to work harder now. Um, we're going to work to get it into Walmarts here in Georgia first. We're going to try to do five stores starting, I think, five stores, maybe less than that. But we're going to work on that. Um, but ultimately, the whole plan is to make this money so we can build that community center in Fitzgerald. So that's the big announcement. The Surrender DVD is coming out. It's going to be out this summer. Uh, it's been three years in the making. We've been working on this thing since uh March of 2013, and here we are, soon to be June 2016, and it is a process. A lot of people don't understand that, but as an independent filmmaker, we don't have thousands and thousands of dollars to sit around and, and you know, just make decisions. Everything we do is based on skills, based on, uh, and let me rephrase that. In our situation, everything we do is based on faith. I can't do anything without faith. Um, I have a lot of movies that I've written. Um, I got a big film that's, you know, I, I've really been praying about. And I got things in the work with big people who could make it happen. And it's all about faith. And that's, that's what I want to leave you with um, at the end of this video is that you got to put your faith in front of you. You got to keep your faith in front of you because without faith, God has nothing to respond to. The Bible says faith without works is dead. We walk by faith and not by sight. Um, so uh, think about it this way. You can be Peter. We can all be Peter. Peter saw Jesus on the water and he beckoned Jesus to tell him to come. He said, you know, beckon me to come, Lord, beckon me to come. If it is you, tell me to come, tell me to come. And Jesus said, come. And Peter stepped out on the water and began to walk on the water. And we all know that that's scientifically impossible to walk on water without running super, super fast, you know, to do it. But just to walk calmly on water, we know that it is impossible to walk on water. But through his faith, Peter's faith in Jesus, he was able to walk on the water. But as the storm began to blow the water and the waves began to toss to and fro, Peter was fine. But he took his eyes off of Jesus, which was the ultimate price, was the ultimate, um, the goal, the, the, the whole mission was to get to Jesus. Peter took his eyes off of Jesus and began to look at the situation around him. And when that happened, he began to sink. And so we can be like Peter. But I choose to be th that person who says, regardless of the situation around me, I'm going to keep my faith. In Jesus, I'm going to keep my faith in God and, and, and we can be like Elijah and go up and call down fire from heaven and watch God do it. All in all, I want you to be excited. I want you to be happy. I want you to know that we got a lot of stuff in the works. I got tons and tons of movies to make. Got a lot of scripts that I want to make. This is just a stepping stone. So uh, look forward to getting your copy of Surrender. Um, inbox me or inbox uh, Latrina, Renee or Emerson Stewart or Bobby. Um, Wilson, or you can go to sydneybryant.com and send us a message. Um, soon we'll have an order page available. You can go to surrenderthemovie.com. Um, we'll have an order page there. Uh, but get excited. Be ready. The DVD is coming. I think you guys are going to be excited. Um, there's a couple of things added, a couple of things changed. Um, I'm excited to say that uh, Sharon Ann Willingham has came on the project. Her song got added to the film. It wasn't in the original, but she's now added in, and it's a great song. Um, you Caught Me. It's a beautiful song, and uh, she has a beautiful voice, and I, I love her ministry, and I'm excited. So with that being said, I'll see you guys in a couple of weeks, Fitzgerald. We're going to bring some DVDs.
God bless you. When the job becomes the focus and family is no longer a priority, One priority. We are pinned down. We need backup immediately. To the rear, Nick! To the rear! God will take great measures to get your attention. Listen, I'm not so sure God really cares about me anymore. Let me think about it. I've served God all my life. I gave him my heart at a young age. And in a short amount of time, he took two of the most important people from me. Everything happens for a reason. You know that. Don't let these thoughts cloud your mind and, and push you away from the only one who can save you. Officer McBride. What do you want? If you see Nikki again, tell her Ruben said, hola. <laughs> How do you know Nikki? Una vida por una vida. They got my child, Jack. Wake up. Realize that this job is interfering with your ability to be a father like you should be. I'm a good father. When was the last time you sat down and just had dinner with Nikki? The last time that you just spent the whole day with your daughter? When was the last time you hugged her and told her you loved her? But why me? Why put me through all of this? I gave him my heart, I served him, and he's putting me and Nikki through hell. Why not you? From the writer and director of Even I, Sometimes it's not for us to get. It's simply for us to trust that God knows what he's doing. God wants your heart, Tracy. Trust him. We are pinned down. We need backup immediately. So stop treating me like a rank sinner. I know the way. You know the way, but you don't live it. God, you got to help me. The time to trust God is when you're blinded for the cares of the world. Tracy, the time to trust him is now. Surrender. On DVD this June.